a match with one penalty um, per competitor. And this is a middleweight, let's see, quarterfinal, I believe, the semifinal. This is the semifinal. And we are only watching this match, actually, because we had to push past Gabrielle and Gabby and mm -hmm. Yara and Mayara. So mm -hmm. now they're in the back. We now see Gabby yep. coming in hot against Gabrielli in the back here. So after this match, we're going to stay right here and watch Gabrielli versus Gabby in the super heavy. Beautiful sweep attempt by, Ra by Raquel. Oh, to, wow. Nice. Amazing nice. throws. <laughs> Almost a little bit of a Harai Goshi mix with a Taitoshi yeah. there from Tamara. Tamara comes on top to make her need a uh, five point lead here. Yep, five point lead. Looks like the refs on the side are asking for an advantage, so she'll be awarded an advantage as well. You know, underhooks and crossface and smash pass frames, all of that kind of stuff is uh, every grip matters, right? Yeah. So we don't want to mess that up. Inches matter, don't they? Yes. Cal might need to put some pressure on the face to get some separation here, which she's doing with two hands right here. Tamara driving her head back down, switching her head to the other side, which is a smart move to relieve that pressure. But now Raquel with a beautiful guard recovery. And this is going to determine our finalist here in the, uh, in the middleweight division, black belt women. So the winner of this will be going into the finals tomorrow. And uh, I believe, I'm double checking right now, I believe she'll be facing Andressa Sintra in the finals. Oh, I spoke too soon. Hasn't been decided. We're going to see Andressa Sintra versus Claire North in the semifinals on the other side. The winner of that will go against the winner of this fight. Interesting to see, uh, you know, there's a lot of options from this position when your partner stands up and you have a closed guard and a body lock. She might pop her feet to yep. the ground and start to suck the hips in. I think that's what she's going to do now. Tamara has a grip of the leg. Yes, she can't stomp down as much as she needs to, right? The, yeah, now the One hips are getting very low. She needs her hips to be much higher to come down. Yes, and she opts to come down. Interesting position on the knee here. She might be able to transition but opts to come back to the feet instead, which can be a dangerous thing to do, as we know, when your partner has that pant, uh, mm -hmm. that pant grip, right? Mm -hmm. So four minutes remaining, Tamara has a 5-0 lead. And uh, behind them, we do see Gabriele Pisani and Gabby Garcia warming up for their semifinals match. Nice double leg entry by Raquel, but almost another big throw yeah. by Tamara. When you have people with uh, good judo and good counter wrestling, and a lot of time counter wrestling is a lot of judo offense or, yep. or you know defensive offense, you have to be very careful with the shots mm -hmm. that you choose to take. Yeah, Canuto had a nice little entry. She's gonna have to really get around the far yes. back hip to avoid a big throw if she's gonna, if she's not. Yeah, the situation becomes dangerous when people does. feel very comfortable with whizzers and underhooks. Because yep. if I shoot in on a, on a single or a double and my partner's able to get a nice whizzer, then the hip can come in very easily. Nice guillotine transition here. I really like, this is the style we see from Canuto a lot in Nogi. And uh, so she's going, you know, she pulled, went for a little bit of a wrestle up, almost looked like she was gonna go for an ankle pick and then switched from the shot to the guillotine, which is a very, very strong position to attack from to either snap down and go to the back. But now she took a bit of a dive shot, almost yeah. ended up in a guillotine of herself <laughs> or of her own. Pulls back into the guard again here. Nice close guard by Raquel. Starts to climb that up immediately, which is a very good idea as, as explosive as Tamara is. If she can climb that guard up and start to slow her down, breaking her down with the collar grip, climbing her guard up onto the higher part of the back. Ooh, nice arm bar attempt here. But Tamara does a good job of keeping her elbow in tight. Does have to be careful about placing the hands on the ground. That's when things can start to get a little sticky for the person on top. And Tamara very conscious of the collar grips now, just kind of popping those off as soon as they come on. And you see a lot of high level people do that because as soon as you let someone talented uh, and strong control your collars it can be difficult to get it back yeah we saw that it's, a lot with adam orzinski mm -hmm, earlier mm -hmm. right yep good posture control good. Raquel, when she wants to get that collar grip that better if she was underneath the arm not over the top We have our semifinals of the lightweight women set up as we just saw on map five. 
uh, Natalie Barrow was able to come away with the win against Kristen. I believe the last name is Nicholson, which means that we'll see who she is facing in the semifinals. Tamara jumps close guard. So. Yeah, in, um, I would say Raquel and Tamara are both two athletes who are very, very diverse as far as being good on their feet, good on the bottom, good in passing. So we've seen, you know, typically in a in a match of this caliber, like a semifinals in the World Championships, you kind of see one person play top and one person play bottom. A lot of the time, I would say, you know, it's pretty common. But in this match, we've seen a really big exchange of position, mm -hmm. which is great for the viewer. We get to see a lot of jujitsu. Um, and grappling from both opponents, which I always love and enjoy. Get to see a very diverse game here, yeah. too. Tomorrow's got that in good inside position with the legs. He's got a lasso on the left side. Cal diving on a foot lock. We don't see them out yet, but uh, we're oh, having that some. That might be tight. Oh, I wow. Mean. Oh, yes. That. that well, for a moment there, that looked tight, but yeah. Tamara was able to kick her foot straight and relieve the pressure, but Raquel's not finished. She has that left foot on the inside of the thigh. Oh, she pops up to her foot now, or to her shin. Yeah, Toe she... hold on the right-hand side. Only one minute left. She's definitely looking for the submission, seeing as she's down by five. Yeah, she could come up and then reset herself and then re just go again. 45 seconds here. Tamara's going to hold on to that five-point lead. Yeah. And they aren't coming out yet, but we have Bia Mesquita and Hannette Stack coming up on that five. And then on this current mat, we have uh, Gabby Garcia versus Gabriele Pisania. And then on mat seven, we have Bianca Basilio coming up against Alexa Yanez. So, man, it's hard to choose matches when That's, they're all incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, really great. We also have Shane Jamil Hill-Taylor coming into his uh, elimination two round on in the featherweight division on that eight in a little bit followed by Maisa Bastos who's always a fun watch so it looks like Raquel and uh, Tamara are going to finish up here tomorrow with her five point one last ankle lock attack by Raquel that was a I would say that was a very fair attack that looked pretty tight at the end there yeah but Tamara jumped on her own just, toe hold yep, too right yep, just, yeah. yeah very good We do have uh, Kainu Dwarch getting started in the heavyweight division on mat three. He's going to be going against uh, Marlon Tanaka right now from NS Brotherhood. I think we'll stay right here to watch Gabrielli Pisani and Gabby Garcia, seeing as this is a semifinal match going to determine the rest of the division. And uh, Kainu's match is the elimination two. And pretty soon here, a match that we don't want to miss on mat two is going to be Jessica Kahn versus Anna Rodriguez.